It's official. I've turned into my parents. I look at houses on Zillow for fun. Club music is way too loud. I made a video talking about house flipping shows. And my idea of a fun Friday night is sitting down and watching some grandpa review kitchen gadgets for 20 minutes. That was easier. And I've seen every episode. Guys, get out while you still can. There's still hope that you won't get excited to go furniture shopping at Ikea. But for those who are already too far gone, welcome. Let's talk about one of my favorite shows on YouTube, Well Equipped. Well Equipped is a series on the YouTube channel Epicurious, and it's hosted by Dan Formosa. Dan tests out popular or unusual kitchen gadgets and then shows how he'd redesign them if he was designing the gadgets himself. The series has been running on the channel since 2019 and currently has 29 episodes as of the making of this video. The show's format is that Dan is given five gadgets each episode corresponding to the episode's theme. For example, the first episode was about food slicing gadgets. He tests the gadgets using two criteria, effectiveness and usability. To test for effectiveness, Dan does a side-by-side -side doing the same task with the gadget and with a more traditional method such as using a kitchen knife. And he sees which method was faster and more effective. It was very effective at producing a pretty good looking cylinder of pineapple slices. Uh, very effective. For usability, Dan does what he calls the left-handed oil test. Dan covers his non-dominant hand with oil and then tries to use the gadget again using his non-dominant hand. According to Dan, the test is to simulate someone with dexterity issues, since they might have difficulty gripping things compared to people without dexterity issues. He checks if the gadget is hard to use compared to using his dominant hand, and he points out if there are any design flaws. There's not a whole lot of pressure involved in doing this. It does feed itself down, but just bear in mind, worst case scenario, you may want to put a towel on top of this. It's something that's going to stabilize your hands a little more if you have any dexterity problems or if your hand is even a little bit slippery. After he finishes testing the gadgets, he draws on a notepad what parts of the products that he'd redesign in order to make the gadgets easier and safer to use, such as adding curves in the handle so it's easier to twist and so you can apply less force compared to a rounded handle. And finally, Dan gives a rating on if he would buy the product on a scale of 1 to 5. I admit that the show does sound a little boring the way I described it, but Epicurious does a lot of great things with the show in order to make the subject matter very entertaining. But before I talk about all that, I just want to give some context to who Dan is. Like I've said in my previous videos about TV shows, a show is only as good as its host. And Epicurious really looked out with getting Dan to host the show. Dan is a pretty well-known design consultant, and like he says in every intro, I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for more than 40 years. Dan's day job is that he's a co-founder of Smart Design, which is a design consulting firm. If you go to his website, you see some of the products that he's helped design over the years. But most notably, he helped design the OXO Good Grips products. Good Grips is a popular line of kitchen utensils that are known for their inclusive designs. The Good Grips veggie peeler was considered revolutionary in the 90s for being the first peeler to have a rubber handle and being easier to grip compared to the regular veggie peelers that were thin and were all metal. The prototypes for the OXO veggie peeler were even inducted into the Smithsonian National Design Museum. I'm kind of a big deal. Dan's job is to design and test kitchen gadgets, so Epicurious just gives him some kitchen gadgets and he just does his thing. Having an expert host a show makes his opinions more credible, since who better to tear in a bad product than someone who does it for a living? It's why I find Dr. Mike and Legal Eagle entertaining when they're roasting TV shows for being unrealistic. By pointing out the flaws, they're educating you on how it could be better or more effective. On Well Equipped, Dan goes into detail about why it'd be better to have a wider container. Come up with a shape in here or maybe some uh, fins or something that would accommodate different size bagels, but be a little bit larger so that it will fit a New York size bagel, which means a real bagel. Or have a handle shaped in a certain way. And that means either give it a little bit of belly or concave. I'm going to give it a belly and a little arch at the top, giving it even just a little bit of contour will hold it more securely in your hand, you'll have to squeeze less. And a lot of other things people might overlook. Dan does roast products for being poorly designed, and it's entertaining when he seems disappointed. We've got a New York size bagel, and I guess a Midwest size bagel slicer. But he also gives credit when a product is actually well designed and it does its job well. This really popped that cork a lot quicker than I expected. And that's always a good thing. If you expect something to work in a certain way and it actually works better than that, you're exceeding expectations. That is a good thing to do design-wise. Although he's an expert in design and kitchen gadgets, it doesn't just take expertise to be a good host. He also has to be entertaining.
Dan's reviews of the products are very informative, but Dan also makes sure to keep your attention by keeping everything lighthearted. Whenever he explains what a product does, he says that it's a product's purpose in life. Its purpose in life is to take your egg-shaped hard-boiled egg and turn it into a cube. Oh my god. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. He doesn't give a bunch of technical terms, and he explains his opinions in a very concise way. And he draws his proposed redesigns in order to better explain his points. I never feel lost when he's explaining something. The way this handle is designed now, it forces you into this position, which can put your wrist at an angle and may not be as friendly ergonomically if your hand was on the edge here, if there was a ball to grab or a mushroom shape, that way you would keep your hand in a neutral position as you spin. I think that would be an improvement. But I mostly find him entertaining because he just has major dad energy. By making my non-dominant hand slippery, it's gonna highlight any deficiencies. And I read those comments. Get your mind out of the gutter. Full disclosure, I grew up on the Jersey Shore playing pinball, and my touch here should be better than amateurs. Even his jokes are dad jokes. What's the possible benefit of having a square egg? Come on, baby, 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven. Craps. I'm really on the fence about this gadget. He's just having fun doing what he enjoys. One of my favorite moments was when he unintentionally designed the scrub mommy sponge when he was reviewing the scrub daddy. I loved his face when the producer showed him that his idea already existed. You could use either side of it because it has two sides. So it would be a combination of scrub daddy and a more traditional scouring pad. So I have been informed that this is not an original idea. This does exist. It is from the makers of Scrub Daddy and it is called Scrub Mommy. Great minds think alike. Another one of my favorite moments was when he accidentally sprayed his eye with lemon juice and he just brushed it off. Don't do that at home. I got it in my eye, but it's okay. I think I'll just get comments about it. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Another aspect that I enjoy is that Dan reviews a large variety of products. He reviews a lot of products that are more traditional, like an egg cracker or a cheese grater, and he's done a couple episodes on vintage gadgets. But he also reviews products that are unusual, like the coffee brew pipe, or products that are just straight gimmicky, like the Mr. Sneezy egg separator. Every episode has a theme, such as gadgets for cutting foods, ones for prepping breakfast, products that were featured on Shark Tank, etc. There's a large variety of products that he tests and reviews, so the content doesn't become stale. Dan is clearly enjoying himself when he's making these episodes, and it's enjoyable to see that he's having fun hosting the show and messing around with gadgets. The space-saving winner are the square hard-boiled eggs. Hosting well-equipped is a very odd job. Although I find the show to be enjoyable overall, there's one aspect of the show that kind of bothers me. I think that Dan should also score the gadgets on how difficult they are to clean after using them. There are products that do their jobs well, but then they're nightmare to clean. For example, I have a pair of tongs that I used to make pasta with the other day, and this is what it looked like after running it through the dishwasher. The grips on the tongs have gaps that cause food and sauce to get stuck inside, and it's pretty much impossible to completely clean. The ability to clean a kitchen product is just as important as being able to use it. If they're not easy to clean, then what's the point of using them? Dan is all about designing products for people with mobility issues, so the products should be able to be as easy to clean as it is to use. Dan does reference the comments asking about having a cleanability score in the most recent episode. I think I would make that a little bit bigger and rounder and put a radius here. I think that would feel a little better and be just a little bit easier to clean. I know what your comments say. Yeah, but how do you clean it? There, I went to the cleaning part. But I honestly think that he should talk about cleanability in all of the episodes. People have been requesting it for a while, and for a lot of people, it might determine whether or not they want to buy a product. And since we're on the topic of requests and comments, there's another frequent request that viewers have been making in the comments for a while. A long requested topic that people have been commenting on in a bunch of videos is to have an episode where Dan reviews gadgets he's designed over the years. He says that he's been designing kitchen gadgets for over 40 years, and he has referenced some products that he's designed in the past. I actually helped design an egg separator years ago and found that cracking an egg to a concave surface was more effective than cracking an egg to a convex surface. So I think it would be interesting to have him reflect on his own work and maybe talk about his creative process and how he comes up with designs. It would make for an interesting episode, but I do understand why he might not be able to. 
Let me explain. When a consultant is working with a company, they might be under a non-disclosure agreement or an NDA. An NDA means that the consultant can't talk about what companies they work with and what they know about the companies they work with. They can't tell family, friends, social media, nobody. Whatever they talk about is between them and their clients. NDAs are put in place so a consultant can't leak information to a competitor and potentially harm the business. If a consultant breaks the agreement in the NDA, they can suffer penalties that were agreed upon when they signed the NDA. Most of the time it's paying for financial damages and legal fees. I have a couple family members who are consultants and they're not allowed to mention what companies they work for. They just go to whatever company hires the firm they work for. If they mention what company they're working for, they can run the risk of leaking trade secrets or confidential information. So Dan might not be able to do an episode where he reviews his own gadgets because it will expose what companies he's worked with. Or there might be a clause saying that he can't talk about the companies for a certain number of years. So guys, I get why you want to see Dan review his own gadgets, but that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Food is one of the things that unites all cultures. Throughout history, everyone has been finding ways to solve problems that we face while we're cooking. Wherever we go, we see a bunch of kitchen gadgets. An air fryer, can opener, cheese grater, mandolin, you name it. There are thousands of products made to help make cooking easier. And we've all thought to ourselves, does this thing really work? But it's very hard figuring out which products are actually effective and which ones are a waste of money without people testing and reviewing these products. So I commend Dan Formosa for dedicating his life to making kitchen gadgets safer and easier for all cooks of all walks of life. And I highly recommend watching Well Equipped. It really puts into perspective how much thought and care goes into the products we buy and use every day, such as why a handle might be shaped a certain way, or why the container is a certain shape, or why it's made from a certain material. The show's a really fun watch, and I hope that any aspiring designers take what Dan says to heart. Companies would come to me and they would describe to me their average consumer or their average user, and I would say that's fine, but I don't care about the average person. I need to know the people who are weakest and strongest. I need to know the tallest and shortest. I need to understand the spectrum. And sometimes that's not in the mindset of people who are designing things. I think that explains why so many products may not be designed as optimally as possible. I still look through the kitchen today and I see opportunities to do something unique and different and to surprise people. So I, from a design point of view, it's, uh, you know, it's not rocket science. It's not life and death. They're just kind of fun things to design and fun things to design cleverly. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like to let me know. If you want me to make more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and click the bell to know when I upload a new video. Anyways, this has been Ari. See you guys next time.